Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. In the top stories we are tracking for you, at least 10 people, including Indians, killed in massive fire in Maldives. Pakistan's ex PM Imran Khan says military officers were behind his execution plan. And Taliban bars Afghan women from amusement parks. And now for all the details. A massive fire that broke out in building in Maldivian capital Mali that contained a repair shop and a residential accommodation killed at least 10 people, including Indians, on Thursday. Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli and Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid expressed condolences and a short full investigation. At least 10 people were killed after a fire broke out in a building in Maldivian capital Mali that contained a repair shop and residential accommodation, local police said on Thursday. The footage of the area was doing rounds on social media. The fire broke out in a garage while the victims were trapped without a way out. Reports suggested among the 10 killed, 9 were expatriates from India while one was a Bangladeshi national. The Indian High Commission in Maldives said on Twitter it was deeply saddened by the tragic fire incident and was in contact with the Maldivian authorities. Local authorities have indicated at least 10 bodies have been found. Uh, local authorities are engaged in identifying the dead bodies. Um, our High Commission is in close contact with uh, the Maldivian authorities in, at various levels. And of course, our High Commission is extending all possible assistance to the affected Indians and their families. Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli and Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid expressed condolences and a short full investigation. Parliament Speaker Mohammad Nasheed raised concerns over the living conditions of expatriate labourers in the country. Migrant workers from South Asia have become a large part of the population on the island. They are thought to make up about half of Mali's 2,50,000 strong population. Moving on, police in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday said they have busted a terror funding and recruitment module in Kupwara district and arrested five persons with weapons planning to carry out attacks. An official said Pakistan-based handlers were coordinating the module to aid the terror operations. Police in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday claimed to have busted a terror funding and recruitment module in Kupwara district and arrested six persons with huge cache of arms and ammunition planning to carry out terror attacks. The police said a joint operation was launched by the army and Kupwara police to nab them. They were allegedly running a terror funding racket under a fake NGO, namely Islahi Falahi Relief Trust and had Pakistan-based handlers who aimed to revive terror activities in North Kashmir. Secret meetings करते थे और जहाँ पे ये decide करते थे कि किस किस को इसमें शामिल किया जाए ताकि वो इनका network जो है वो और फैलता जाए और इस तरीके से terror activities को यहाँ पे बढ़ावा दिया जाए इसके साथ साथ मैं ये भी बताता चलूँ कि उपाड़ा के जो Pakistan based handlers हैं जिनमें General Abdullah जिसका असली नाम गुलाम रसूल शाह जो हयामा का रहने वाला है वो और एक मोहम्मद सुल्तान पीर जो कि वो भी हयामा का रहने वाला है और इसके साथ साथ और भी टेररिस्ट हैंडलर्स जो है वो इन लड़कों को हैंडल कर रहे थे और यहां पे टेररिज्म को दोबारा से रिवाइव करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे इंडिया हैज लॉन्ग ब्लेम पाकिस्तान हेल्प्स टेरर ग्रुप्स इनफिल्ट्रेट अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर टू स्प्रेड अनरेस्ट इन कश्मीर वैली व्हिच हैज बीन एट द हार्ट ऑफ डेकेड्स ऑफ होस्टिलिटी बिटवीन द आर्क राइवल्स पाकिस्तान हावेवर डिनाइज द एलिगेशंस इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has threatened to expose the names of the military officials who plotted to assassinate him. Khan suffered a bullet injury in his right leg when two gunmen fired a volley of bullets in Punjab province past Thursday, where he was in leading anti-government protest march. 
Pakistan's former premier and PTI party chief Imran Khan on Wednesday threatened to disclose the name of a second military officer who he claimed monitored his execution plan from the control room along with Major General Faisal Nasir. 70-year-old Khan suffered a bullet injury in the right leg when two gunmen fired a volley of bullets in Wazirabad area of Punjab province last Thursday where he was leading a protest march against PM Shahbaz Sharif's government. Sharing an old video of his rally where he spoke of conspiracies against him, Khan said he knew about the assassination attempt two months ago. He alleged that Shahbaz Sharif, Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah and Major General Nasir were part of a sinister plot to assassinate him and blame it on religious extremists. <laughs> पूरा टीवी के ऊपर प्रोग्राम किया कि इमरान खान ने तो ही ने मजहब किया है इसके पीछे गेम क्या है इसके पीछे गेम ये है और चार वो बंद कमरों में लोग बैठे हैं जिन्होंने फैसला किया मुझे मरवाने का वो इसके पीछे हैं इन्होंने फैसला किया कि जी कहेंगे तो ही ने मजहब किया Meanwhile, reports suggest in a meeting in London, PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif suggested Shahbaz Sharif not to come under PTI's pressure, especially on its key demand of early elections, while the country grapples with an economic crisis. The PTI's long march towards Islamabad, which was suspended following attack on Khan, was poised to resume on Thursday from Wazirabad in his absence. Afghan women on Wednesday were stopped from entering amusement parks in Kabul. After the country's morality ministry said there would be restrictions on women being able to access public parks. Since taking over Afghanistan last year, the Islamist Taliban has imposed restrictions on movement of girls and women. In the latest sweeping restriction from the Taliban, Afghan women on Wednesday were stopped from entering amusement parks in Kabul after the country's morality ministry said that there would be restrictions on women being able to access public parks. A spokesperson for the Ministry for the Propagation of Virtue and Prevention of Vice confirmed that women would be restricted from accessing parks. It was not clear how widely the restrictions applied or how they affected a previous rule from the Taliban-run ministry, saying parks must be segregated by gender and certain days would be aside for women. Since taking over Afghanistan last year, the Islamist Taliban has banned schools for girls above 6th grade, while most women no longer have access to employment opportunities. The group has ordered women should not leave home without a male relative and must cover their faces, though some women in urban centres ignore the rule. No country has so far recognised the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development. Western governments have said that the group needs to reverse its course on women's rights for any part towards formal recognition. The International Monetary Fund has provisionally agreed a 4.5 billion US dollar support program for Bangladesh with the country's finance minister saying the deal would help prevent economic instability escalating into a crisis. Bangladesh is now the third South Asian nation to secure a staff level agreement with the IMF for loans this year. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, provisionally agreed a 4.5 billion US dollar support program on Wednesday for Bangladesh in a 42-month arrangement with the country's finance minister, EHM Mustafa Kamal, saying the deal would help prevent economic instability escalating into a crisis. Bangladesh's $416 billion economy has been one of the world's fastest growing for years. But rising energy and food prices, sparked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, along with shrinking foreign exchange reserves, have swelled its import bill and current account deficit. It is now the third South Asian nation to secure a staff-level agreement with the IMF for loans this year after Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Bangladesh's economic mainstay is the export-oriented garment industry, 
which is bracing for a slowdown as big customers like Walmart are saddled with excess stocks as inflation forces people to prioritize their spending. The country's foreign exchange reserves had dwindled to 35.74 billion US dollars by November 2 from 46.49 billion US dollars a year ago, central bank data showed. A staff level agreement is typically subject to approval by its executive board, which is expected in the coming weeks. Finance Minister Kamal said the IMF team agreed with the government's economic reforms. Earlier in August, Bangladesh hiked fuel prices by around 50 percent in a move to trim its subsidy burden, but government officials denied at the time that this was a prerequisite for the IMF loan. Funds will be disbursed in seven tranches, Kamal said, adding that the first installment will be available in February 2023. Sri Lanka's largest port on Wednesday began construction of a 700 million US dollar terminal project partly funded by India's Adani Group, marking the first foray by an Indian company into the sector. Asian giants India and China are both weighing for influence in the island nation located near busy shipping routes. Sri Lanka's largest port began on Wednesday construction of a 700 million US dollars terminal project partly funded by India's Adani Group, an official said, marking the first foray by an Indian company into the sector. Upul Jayatesa, Managing Director of the state-run Sri Lanka Ports Authority or SLPA said that the first stage is expected to be done in the third quarter of 2024 and the full project will be completed by 2025 end, he added. India has this year provided the most financial support to its southern neighbour which is facing its worst economic crisis in more than seven decades. India is now keen to see long-term projects by Indian companies take off in Sri Lanka. Ports to edible oils group Adani, controlled by Asia's richest person Gautam Adani, holds a 51-person stake in the West Container Terminal of the port, which also has a terminal, which also has a terminal run by China Merchants Port Holdings Company Limited. India and China are vying for influence in the island nation of 22 million, located near busy shipping routes. Sri Lankan conglomerate John Keel's Holdings owns 31% of the WCT, and the rest is held by the SLPA. In September, the Sri Lankan government of Ranil Wickremesinghe, who became president in July, had signed a deal with the Adani Group for the West Terminal, while the East Container Terminal is being constructed by the Ports Authority and expected to be complete by late 2024. India has extended about 4 billion US dollars, including swaps and multiple credit lines to Sri Lanka, amid an acute shortage of dollars and essentials. Amid truce along the line of control, wedding celebrations with peace and tranquility are back in the remote border areas of India's Jammu and Kashmir. In February last year, both India and Pakistan agreed strict observance of all agreements and ceasefire along the line of control and other sectors. With the semblance of peace, wedding celebrations are back in the remote border areas along the de facto line of control LOC in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir, a year after Indian Pakistan agreed to ceasefire truce. Villagers of Churunda in Uri sector along the border were recently seen involved in a wedding revelry, with many expressing joy over no shelling over the past 12 months, which was not possible some years back. Army personnel also came forward to be part of the celebrations and bless the couple. इतने ही मतलब मेहमान हमारे आए कोई दिक्कत नहीं कोई परेशानी नहीं मेरे फ्रेंड्स परमला से उड़ी से हर एक पहुंचे शादी का नजारा आया लुत्फ आया और बहुत अमन रहा Hundreds of marriages have taken place in border villages of Kashmir since the ceasefire began bringing back the old memories of weddings in houses instead of moving the events to safer places The ceasefire violations also used to lead to loss of lives and property well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasia newsline and follow us on Twitter at sasia newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.